And the first question is just about how, what it means to you about speaking at the AUA conference. It's a real pleasure to talk to the AUA conference. Um, universities depend on all of their staff. At Sheffield Hallam, we use the phrase one university, uh, and it's really important to us. Uh, universities are big, complicated institutions, and big and complicated institutions depend on all their staff to make a significant difference. Um, and so your presentation was called Winning the Argument. What role do you think professional services staff play in winning the argument? So what I've talked about to the conference a little bit earlier, I've talked about the uh, strong case that those of us inside universities think we have to make about success. I've talked about some of our critics. I've talked about some of the challenges facing universities in what is a more and more difficult world as funding, as the politics, as public spending, as life becomes a bit more difficult. And I was very keen that universities have got to make their case confidently, articulately. They've got to understand their audience. They've got to understand their critics. And that's not just a job for the top of the university. It's not just a job for the comms team. Uh, we all have a role in making the case for universities. We make it in our neighbourhoods. We make it in our homes. We make it locally. We make it regionally. We make it nationally. And what I really wanted to do was to flag up the importance of getting that narrative right for each institution. That's great. And we had, we've been um, introducing our new app this year, and uh, there was loads of questions from the floor. So I'm going to ask um, my colleague Laura to ask you some of the live questions that came through. Hi, Chris. Hi, Laura. Um, so one of the questions was, why do we accept that academic excellence is linked to competition, i.e. league tables, and not collaboration? That's a really good question, and one of the things I talked about uh, this morning was the way in which uh, we build, there's a narrative that runs that we believe in competition and we believe in collaboration. For myself, I don't believe that academic excellence is linked to league tables. I think league tables uh, tell us some things, they don't tell us things that are particularly important. Um, universities exist in a competitive space, they exist in a collab collaborative space. Understanding the ways in which those th two things work together is one of the things that's important to getting the narrative right. Um, this question was asked before, but it was such an interesting answer, I thought it might be nice to ask you again. Um, it's, what does Chris make of the Times twisting the excellent news that many students who entered with 3D or less and got firsts into a bad news story about grade inflation. Can we ever shake off the more means worse narrative? Oh, it was such a disappointing story, wasn't it? For, for those people who haven't seen it, it was the story that significant numbers of students who come in with low grades go on to do very well at university. Well, that is a good news story. Uh, we, we recruit, school doesn't work for all students. Uh, students come in with all sorts of different experiences. Uh, we ought to be celebrating the quality of teaching. We ought to be uh, celebrating the added value. If you pursue the line from the Times articles, in a sense, of why, why bother with the experience at all? If you could think you can simply predict it on the basis of entry qualifications. It was really disappointing and it was uh, just an illustration of the extent to which we've got to get out there and make the positive case. Absolutely, yeah. Um, and then uh, another one that you did actually cover in the talk, but uh, again, a uh, very interesting question, was um, how do you see the next five years progressing across the sector? And specifically, um, if what happens if institutions do not address the issues now? What is at risk? It's, again, it's a really good question. I don't think anybody uh, should uh, deceive themselves that the last 10 years, have, the last 20 years, have been very benign uh, policy environment for universities. I suspect 10 years ago, none of us thought that the 10 years we've just had were going to be as benign as they've turned out to be. Um, there's no immutable reason why institutions that have been successful in the past will continue to be successful. Uh, that demands skilled management uh, from professional staff as well as anybody else. But it also demands a really clear account of what it is that's important about the institution. It demands a strong narrative that drives the decisions that institutions make. And we can all point to uh, universities, um, we could put to other institutions that, that thrived in the past that have not carried on succeeding. I don't think any of us, wherever we are, should take success for granted. It's going to be hard work. The next five years are going to be tougher than the last ten, there's no doubt about that. And, uh, one more question? 
<laughs> of course. Um, how can we as a sector challenge the echo chamber we often find ourselves in? A lot of our sources of shared information and debate are underpin underpinned by a lot of common assumptions. And when we talk about diversity, we rarely mean diversity of opinion. I think this is almost goes to the heart of the whole of the whole thing. Um, we've seen repeatedly ways in which universities uh, universities are, there, there, there's consensus over so many issues we have to find ways it's one of the most difficult things in life isn't it listening to people who are not talking to you we have to find ways of opening our, ourselves up to, to dissenting voices if only to understand where they're coming from if only to make the argument but it's it's really difficult and, and we know don't we that um university staff and students were overwhelmingly in favour of remaining in the European Union in the 2016 referendum. The universities are set in communities, many of which voted by a majority to leave. The analysis since tells us that there's a, there's a divide there that's cultural as much as anything else. We have to get out and listen hard to, voice, to dissenting voices. We have to position universities in communities where they're, which are not familiar territory for them. Thank you very much, Chris. Thank you.